Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 24. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 4 or the PDFs for chapter 4, just click on the link below the video and go to the finance section for chapter 4. Hey, uh, we need to talk about, we talked about calculating present value, future value, and the number of periods using the NPER function. In this video, we want to talk about using the rate function. Here's our problem. If you want to buy a $350,000 CNC router to improve manufacturing efficiency, and you can invest 250k today for the next five years, compounding two times a year, what annual interest rate do you need to find so you can afford the machine? Well, just like our last video when we solved for uh, num total number of periods, we have uh, a bunch of information here, but it's the period rate, not present value future value or some other variable we're solving for. So we, we have all our variables. This is what we're solving for. We're actually looking for the I part of this. We, we actually know the, uh, the N, which is two times a year. However, the rate function will spit this answer out, and then we're going to have to divide by our N to get to our I. Again, just like last video, we just use our same formula right here, plug in all the numbers, and there it is, the I is what we're solving for. So as we slowly solve this, we get to this step right here. We have an exponent. We need to get to the variable inside there, so we have to take the tenth root of both sides. Well, the tenth root of this gives us that. We take the tenth root of that, we get that, and then we simply have all variables left. We subtract one from both sides, then multiply both sides by two, or we do the subtraction first and multiply both sides by two, and finally we get our i. In Excel, we just use the rate function, right? So, so far in this chapter, we've seen future value, present value, NPER, and now rate. So we plug in our variables, and it will solve. The only caveat is that it will give us the period rate, right? And then we finally uh, multiply by 2 to get our 6.8. So if you want to buy a machine, buy the $350,000 machine, and you have $250,000 to invest today for five years, compounded semi-annually, you would need an APR of 6.84. Let's go see over here in Excel. I'm going to calculate my I minus N. Well, that is going to be our rate. NPER, total number of periods, years times number of compounding periods per year, comma, we don't have that yet, next chapter, present value, it is going to be a minus, comma, future value, that's going to be our positive. We're not going to use the type until next chapter, and we're not going to use guess. We almost never need that. All right, so when I hit Enter, totally straightforward and simple. We didn't have to do all that math and uh, take the tenth root of both sides, but we do need to remember that that is a period rate, so I'm going to take this times our number of periods. So we can write our answer in Word, words. You want to buy a $350,000 CNC machine to improve manufacturing efficiency, and you can invest 250k for the next five years. Compounded two times a year, the annual rate would have to be 6.84. All right, that's how to use the rate. We now let's look at what is called Rule 72. We're going to go over to Example 10 right here. Rule 72 is a method of getting an estimate of what rate you need to double your money. So if you, we can, you can use any two figures, but here's the present value, here's the future value, so we want to double our money. You need to know just the time. Now we have 12 months in a year for five years, so our total periods, you need to know that to use the rule of 72. We'll go ahead and calculate that equals 12 times 5 years. And then the rule of 72 is you just take equals and the number 72 divided by total number of periods. Now notice this is total periods, which in our case are months. So when you do this rule, it gives you the monthly rate. And it gives it to you in this form here. Really, if you want the rate, you would have to divide by 100, right? But let's go ahead and continue this. Once you have an estimate, and that just means 
1.2% is the monthly rate you would need to double your money given 60 months. So to get the uh, APR, we of course take our or annual interest rate, we take our monthly rate times or our period rate times our number of periods per year. Now I'm going to go ahead and convert this because this is not this is an actual number 14.4 so I'm going to divide it by a hundred to get our act and that that'll slide the decimal zoop, zoop like that to give us a, an actual decimal that is uh, our, a rate we can use now let's go ahead and see how good this estimate is I'm going to use the rate function NPR well we know that don't need the PMT until next chapter. Present value, I'm going to say negative. Boop. Future value. By the way, you, you know, generally when, or one way to do a calculation like this when you're just talking about doubling, you can just use a 1 and a 2, right? You don't have to use, you know, 1,000 and 2,000. All right. Oh, that gives us the period rate. And notice it's pretty darn close. This is 1.16. This is 1.2. Let's go ahead and I'm going to hit F2. I'm going to multiply this because the rate always spits out the period rate. So I'm going to take that period rate times the number of periods and that will give us our annual rate or our APR. So that's pretty close, right? 13.94, this one is 14.4, pretty darn close. Um, let's go ahead and use this, and this rate right here, that's our estimate, and calculate future value. This is just another way to, to like double or triple check. I'm going to use this rate. If we use this rate, we get exactly 2,000, right? But I'm going to use this rate here, comma, NPER, I will use my 60. Don't need that one till chapter five. Present value, I'm going to say minus. We don't uh, need type till next chapter either. Whoops. Well, I wish, right? I wish. What do we do wrong there? Wrong rate. We're actually going to have to take this one here, and this won't work either because that's a hundred and. 20% uh, we have to take that and divide it by a hundred alright I got my fingers crossed alright so as an estimate it's pretty close it gives us a, a few more dollars because this 1.2 is a little bit bigger than our uh, 1. Point whatever we got here I forget what this is you can always check I'm gonna highlight that little part and hit the F9 key alright so it was 1.16 escape because if you just hit enter it'll leave that in as a number escape nevertheless pretty close estimate and seven rule of 72 is simply used uh, you know, like to do in your head if you do in a spreadsheet you're not going to use the rule of 72 again if you know the total number of periods and you want to double your money just take 72 divided by that boom it gives you a rough estimate one more example for our rate here this is uh, just a slight twist to this. And this is like one of the homework problems. Time for our investment is given as 36 months. We know that we have number of compoundings per year, two. Present value is 72,500. We know our future value is 100,000. What is the rate? The only trick to this is we don't have years, right? So how do we get years from months? Right here, I'm going to say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the months divided by 12. That gives me my years. Now the rest of these, we can just use our formulas and our rate function. Total number of periods, hey, the three years times our number of compounding periods. Again, in chapter two, we'll use a lot of two for our n number of compounding periods because bonds oftentimes pay interest twice a year. Um, our 
next step is our period, right? So we're going to use our rate. NPR, oh, we just calculated that. Comma, PMT, we're not going to do that till next chapter. Present value, minus that amount right here. Future value. By the way, if you don't, uh, and then we don't type as next chapter and guess we don't need. By the way, if you leave out this negative, let's just see what happens. It can't calculate it. The way the future value functions work is there's when you're de when you have both future value and present value, one of them has to be negative. Now this particular one is well. Let's go ahead, hit enter. Okay, that gives us our period rate. That means our semi-annual rate, half year rate. So to get it back up to APR or annual rate, I just say, hey, my period rate times number of periods. And we can check this. We can do a, a check it a number of different ways, actually. And what's great about being able to check is if you're in charge of your spreadsheet and you want to make sure it's accurate, if you have multiple ways to kind of get at the same answer, you can double and triple check. But let's just double check here. Rate. Oh, I'm going to use my semi-annual NPR. Oh, that's 6. PMT, don't need that till next chapter. Present value, minus this. And when I hit enter, I should get, I got my fingers crossed, 100K. All right. Uh, that's a little bit about uh, the rate function. Uh, three examples there. When we come back one last video in chapter four, we want to look at present value and future value from the lender's point of view and the borrower's point of view because the cash flows are different. All right, see you next video.